and and we're live i and we're yeah we are live we are live oh my goodness oh my goodness how you doing brian thank you for coming I, on <laughs> i can't believe it i walk away from my computer for two seconds and the world goes crazy it's gone absolutely mad what are we even doing here what are we talking about man it, it's insane like I was about to get ready to go to sleep because right now it's like 1.30 a.m. And then this bombshell gets dropped from Elon saying, if I could screen, if I could share the screen, saying that Tesla Robot Taxi unveil on eight, eight on August 8th, mm -hmm. obviously this year. And I'm just like, what the heck, man? And then I just get messages through DMs like, dude, you should go live, you should go talk about it. And I'm just like, I'm not going to go alone. I need to bring someone with me to talk about. And so who, I mean, who better than uh, Tesla or my my Tesla weekend, formerly Future Aza, Brian. Well, today was a crazy day. So for those who don't know or are just tuning in, two big things happened. First, uh, Reuters said, and I just realized my audio needs to be balanced. Reuters said that they need, uh, that they know for certain that uh, Tesla is uh, canceling the compact car. Now, Reuters is not a bastion of truth. Ba Reuters gets it wrong with plausible deniability, and they do so badly in many ways on purpose. So the first example that comes to mind is Giga Mexico City. Oh my gosh, we've got a local minister who's on record, doesn't want to say his name, but we know he's real. And I believe they do know he's real. And I believe that person does exist saying, look, there's going to be Giga Mexico City. And forget the fact that uh, the transport infrastructure doesn't make sense. They're going to be flying the cars out from the airport. No, they're not. No, they're not. That would add that would add ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars per car. That makes no sense at all. The author surely had to know that was BS. And then when the editor got it and looked at it, the editor should have looked at it and said, you know, this story is complete nonsense, right? Well, we have a, a minister who's on, who's not on the record, but who has spoken to us and we can verify, we have plausible deniability. Good enough. Run it. They say run it because what difference does it make if we're publishing absolute nonsense as long as we're actually publishing it? That, I've written for some big publications in the past and they, the editors would fact check me on everything. They'd say, this is an interesting point. Where did you get it? I need a citation. Yeah. And these guys, their citation, their whole citation is one guy said, and he's legit. We're not reporting that it's happening. We're reporting that he said it's happening and that's good enough for us. So that's part one of the story. And then part two of the story today is Elon pushed back quite a bit and then said, Look, we're actually unveiling the robo taxi on 8-8, uh, which for folks in Europe would be uh, 8 of 8. So that would be uh, an interesting date to put on the calendar market. Uh, we're going to learn something. So uh, what do you what do you do? What do you make of it? Um, so oh, let's man. start. Let's start with the Reuters <laughs> part. Let's yeah. start with the Reuters part. If you look at the story, what what. What was said is some suppliers were told, look, here's the project that you've been working on, NV91. Um, we're winding down NV91. Thanks for all the hard work. Be sure to document the heck out of it so that we don't lose anything. That doesn't, right. that doesn't mean we've given up on the compact because China is too hard to compete with. China's too hard to compete with. What are you talking? Tesla loves competing with China even in China, and they do very well with it. Tesla is still the go-to EV brand in China. So starting with the Reuters part, what did you make of it? Well, the first thing that came out and I started reading it, I'm just like, and I even tweeted about this. I'm like, this is probably the biggest FUD making news I have ever, you know, um, read about uh, recently. Well, just not recently, uh, uh, past these four years that I've been following Tesla. This has to be one of the biggest FUD. I mean, when I first read this, I'm like, did they not read Elon's biography? Like, did, did they not read the whole book that came out? It clearly mentions about the compact car. It mentions about the robot taxi and all that kind of stuff. 
And it's quite funny because this is reminisce back in, I think it was 2017 where the Model 3 came out. And then a similar article came out like this. I'm not too sure if it was Reuters or not, but a similar, you know, headline came out saying that they're going to scrap the Model 3. Oh man, it's just, it's just at this point, I mean, when the stock dropped like 5%, I took that time and I bought more shares. I just mm -hmm. took, I I'm like, this is just a, a, a easy opportunity to buy more shares. And Elon came out and said, well, they're lying. <laughs> it's oh not God, true. It's gold. It's yeah. gold. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. They're, uh, it's lazy. Reuters a while back added a paywall. And once they added that paywall, clickbait became the soup of the day every day. Their, their motivation is not to have good information. It's to have early information, even if it's wrong. And that certainly uh, shows. Yeah. And what's crazy is that here's, here's where Elon was saying, Reuters is lying. It's just absolutely... Uh, I, I don't understand the publishers. Like, do do they not, you know, like like you, you mentioned earlier, they go through a lot of editors to make sure that, you know, it's decent. They don't get humiliated like this. And this is probably the biggest humiliation for, for you know, Reuters since ever. <laughs> since ever. Well, no, because they're shameless. So BuzzFeed used to have Buzz. So first of all, BuzzFeed used to be a thing. And BuzzFeed had two divisions. They had the clickbait division and the news division. And their news division was fantastic. It was award-winning. They did real, expensive, serious, deep-dive journalism where they would investigate. Um, but that's very expensive, and you don't make your money back on that. But they also had their clickbait division, and there were seven reasons for it. And number three might surprise you. Ah, I remember the clickbait division. So those guys... Um, we're able to keep it separate. Reuters doesn't have their separate division. So most of what they run is clickbait. I'm here to tell you that there is very little correlation between how much time, effort, and money I spend to produce a video and how well it performs in terms of clicks, views, and, and revenue. So sometimes I'll have a video that I spend less than an hour researching gets a guest or two together, shoot it in 15, 20 minutes, and it's my biggest video of the month. Yeah. Other times I'll spend I'll fly halfway across the country and make a video <laughs> that I think is very interesting and insightful. And the, the comments are very favorable. We love this kind of stuff. Great. But there's like eight of you and that's not enough. Mm. So yeah. there's uh, plenty of disconnect there. When Reuters yeah. switched to, uh, to a revenue model, that, re that made them less of a wire service. So their custom, because when they were a wire service, their product was high quality journalism. Now that they've got a paywall, their product is clicks. That's all we care about. So they will run absolute garbage uh, if, they can, if it's legal to do so. And if you've got people saying, which this article does, NV91 has been shelved. That doesn't mean it's been canceled forever. That doesn't mean that it's because of China. You can add your own conclusions, especially if you grab your, a resident expert who loves to be quoted and say, hey, do you think it's going to do this? And they go, yep, great. It's in it's in the story. It's it's fact now. It's part of the, the reality. So there's no reason for them not to. They're financially motivated to absolutely do that. And it makes journalism worse. Every day it, it makes journalism a little worse. So uh, yeah. that's and what's, cr yeah. and what's crazy. Yeah. The impact on this, like, look at this. Like, so we, it was like, it was like the timing of this. Like, so we had the opening, it was stable. It was actually, yeah, it was a stable. And then the news broke out, like literally right at 11 AM. And then it just drops and it continued to drop until Elon came and said, no, they're lying. Then it jumps back up and then it just stays stabilized. And then we get, once the market closed, <laughs> Elon comes out and says, oh yeah, by the way, Robotax is gonna be unveiled on 8th of August. And then it's up 4%. It's, I don't know, being a Tesla investor is, is just, you gotta have a different mindset. It's 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 crazy, it's crazy. What a day, what a what a day. day. What a day. What? So before we move on to part two, which is the robo taxi, yeah. we got to ask, we got to ask our viewers to comment. What, uh, what is your take on the Reuters thing? Big news, no news. What's going on? 
Uh, so on to part two, the robo taxi, it's going to be announced. Yep. Now we can talk about what we think it is. Uh, but the real question is going to be, um, is it ready? Is it ready? Now you haven't experienced V12 yet. Um, no, but I, not I even have. V11, nothing. Oh. I, I've, I've, I've have not experienced any form of full self driving except for autopilot. That's right. So you didn't have it in Canada when you were there last. Yeah. Nope. So the, that's the, it will be different when you return. You shall see. Hopefully. But what will I'm you see? To it. What will <laughs> you see is the question. Yeah. So we've got to um, consider that part. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about that. That's the elephant in the room. Is it going to be ready? My initial take is, um, my initial take is no today as of today no as of today it would just be rolling over curbs all day and there are enough little edge cases left if you look at a good example is i had a, a video with uh brian reby drives electric and jim the iowa tesla guy a few days ago and one of the conclusions we reached is we disengage more than we should not because it's doing something wrong or dangerous but because we're used to how we drive and there are times when if you just give it a second it'll do just fine but we say no 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 i'm just gonna i'm just gonna take over i don't have the headspace for this right now whatever i'm gonna just drive if you watch waymo driving the streets of san francisco you will see that they uh they do a lot of that they do a lot of pausing and regrouping to get their stuff sorted out uh, does that mean that you know they're that they're that they're doomed does it mean that they're on the right path mm. i think it's a matter of opinion you could argue that well elon can see behind the curtain he knows what's coming next yeah yes yes but he's been able to see behind the curtain since forever and a number of his past predictions have not proven correct uh especially in terms of FSD deployment. Yeah. <laughs> no one, Elon. <laughs> yes. Well, when you first heard about it, when did you think it would be done? Because for oh, me, man. it was... Robo, Robo Taxi, honestly, I, I think at least for another four years, not another four months. So that's for sure. That's why when, when this news came out, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, it was a jaw-dropping news for me. Robo Taxi unveiled in four months time. I didn't think it's going to happen until four years time. I, I, I in, in my, even in my valuation models, I don't even have robot taxi in it. So it's just like, and what's even crazy about this is that this is not going to make the same mistake they did with Cybertruck unveiling it. And then, you know, releasing the product four years later, they, they know that now I don't think the robot taxi is going to make much of an impact to their vehicle sales because I think this is going to be more of a, of like, I think of an Uber and Lyft coming and purchasing in large quantities. I don't think anyone can just go and buy a robot taxi. This is my thoughts because I, I, I'm, I'm under the impression that the robot taxi and the compact car, they're both on the same platform. Like they're being built on the same next generation, you know, um, next generation vehicle. So. That's, it's a little confusing to me, but it looks like what they're doing is that with the robot taxi, they want to get this out to those fleet operators. I think you, you, you want to say those robot taxi fleet operators so they can buy it in bulk and use that. And now they can gather more data. But I don't know. At this point, it's just I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in shock. So <laughs> what are your thoughts? <laughs> OK, so I, I think it'd be tricky to run your own robo taxi fleet and then try to pretend to Uber and Lyft that you're not directly competing with them trying to eat their lunch. Because what, what you find in those situations is if, um, if you're the gold rush, if you're in the gold rush and you're a miner, you know, who made the most money during the gold rush, right? It was the guy selling the pickaxes. Yeah, exactly. Now, what if the guy selling the pickaxes also ran a mining operation? Mm -hmm. What if the guy allotting all the plots of land was also involved in mining? You'd say, right. are we really getting the best, the best plots of land? Are we really getting the, the places that are likely to strike gold? Because Tesla will, 
if they're running their own fleet, they will maximize their profits. And if they're selling to people running fleets, they, they will maximize the profits there. And I think, I think they'll have a hard time selling it if they don't make a sufficient case to the Ubers and Lyfts and other fleet operators that they're actually in it together and not just trying to plunder every last penny they can as a share, as a shareholder. I mean, my opinions are probably a little different on what they should do. Uh, but so how do you think, how do you think this is, how, how do you think they're going to sell these things? Like how, how, like, this are the they going runs. to sell them? Are they yeah. going to lease them? So if you ask me this morning, I had a very good answer for you, which okay. is it'll be, it'll be as of this morning, my answer was um, all cars are robo taxis. They may or may not have a model. That's also a dedicated mm, robo taxi yeah. without a wheel in it. Um, but it would be built on the same platform. And now all of that's kind of been thrown up in the air a bit. So yeah. th because the question is, do you sell them? Uh, you would obviously have to sell some. You can't afford to keep every car. If you're building 2 million cars, you can't, they don't have the money to keep 2 million cars. That's too right. many. Uh, and well, yes, but they'll be making so much money. Yes. Yes. If the car can pay for itself in two years or even, you know, probably two years, because there's going to be a lot of logistical build out for charging hubs and whatnot that can handle these. Uh, you would still not be able the the revenue coming back within those two years would not be enough to increase the fleet at the yeah. speed at which you might otherwise be interested in doing it. And then the question is during that time, does someone else solve it? Does, but if, but here's yeah. the thing, if, if, <laughs> if, if you're first to market and Tesla is second to market, Tesla wins. They've got a three year head start mm -hmm. on vehicles that can already activate today. All you That's really true. need to do is put a safeguard in place so that people don't jump into the driver's seat and grab the wheel. Uh, I don't know how all that would work, but uh, I'm sure it's been considered. Yeah. Uh, um, with, with, with this, I don't know with, I, what was coming to my mind right now is that maybe, maybe just maybe, um, Tesla may make their own little robo taxi fleet, their own little, like a, like a separate business in its mm -hmm. own, in its own thing and use that in like regulated place or not even regular regulated places anywhere that they're allowed to do it mm -hmm. and just use the fleet there. And, oh man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so let's explore that. A lot of people say, well, geofence, if it has to be geofenced, it doesn't work. This isn't geofenced. This is logistically fenced. We need a yard that's dedicated to the maintenance of these vehicles. We need a, a charging places that can actually handle them, whether that's putting one guy at <clears throat> a particular supercharger to plug them in and unplug them. Um, all those things could be, could be workable, but you have to do it. So it would make sense to start in one city, someplace where there's good demand, someplace where they could make money, get the shop put in, get the techs trained, get the uh, the attendees who are going to clear cameras and, and deal with the charging and all that, get all that sorted, and then go next city, next city, next city. Meanwhile, they could still be selling them to Uber and Lyft and saying, look, we're not... Uh, this market we will not enter for two years <laughs> they could they could if they want okay. if they want to move units it's again these are ideas we're not yeah we have not had awesome. time to think these things through no. Benji. we no, just we got, got we this is brand new information <laughs> it reminds me of the kids in the hall brain candy yeah. movie where the CEO says the board wants to know if uh, we're going to make it available over the counter. He's like, oh, that's, you know, so where are we at with that? With that thing that you just mentioned just now? Yeah. Where, how's that coming? Oh, we're all over that, Don. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, 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 let's um, um, move on to this one then. This question, what do you think is going to be unveiled? on the on august 8th like what are they what do you think they're gonna come up with and say oh hey guys this is our little robot taxi this is what i think what i think is that they're probably gonna quite and say so this is how we're gonna run the system this is how um it's gonna work 
And this is the vehicle that will be available in six months' time. <laughs> so Something the, yeah. like that. <laughs> so so you, you've got the first question, right, which is when. Are we going to see an announcement without a date? Because if we do, we run into the market saying, oh, this is Roadster again. This is Cybertruck again. This is Semi again. We don't want an announcement for something that may happen in five years. We need, we need real dates. And that's an area where they've struggled. I do think we will see the design. And I think the design is unpredictable. I've seen people today on X saying, oh, no, we know the design. Here it is. It was in the book. It was this. this. Yeah. Said, no, no, no. Those are that's a board with 100 designs. And if you look <laughs> at the board with Cybertruck's 100 designs, it wasn't on there. There were some that got a little bit close, but the vast majority were just beautiful drawings of things that could be. So we've got a, a lot of people will latch onto one piece of information and decide that it's, that it's gospel. That could be the design. I don't know. I think what we're going to see is going to be something that defies prediction. It could be an egg. I don't know. That's a very strong shape. Um, it could be, that the entire shell is plastic. You know, it could be a bumper car. Those are very cheap and easy to fix and do the job well. Now, obviously it's not gonna be a bumper car, but you get the idea. It could be something that is well outside of what we expect today. And it doesn't need a lot of the things that we think of from cars. It doesn't yeah. need to have f necessarily four forward facing seats. All we need to do is a whole different sort of crash testing to make sure it's still safe. Uh, yeah. yeah. What do you think it's going to be? Well, I think it's definitely going to have two doors. Uh, I think we've seen some, uh, I mean, AI generated photos on X, a lot of them. Um, but I, I mean, it would make sense if the thing is just two, uh, yeah, two seater, a two seater, because it's gonna be because I keep coming back to this. It's gonna be the same. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be be built on the same platform as the compact car. It's the same, it's the next generation vehicle. So I would say it may be something similar in terms of size, and maybe later on they can increase the robot taxi because it's so good they can turn it into a van or something. I don't know, but um, I do expect it to look something something like the compact car they're going to be making. So it's going to be like design one and then design two next year when they bring out or announce or unveils the compact car. It looks similar, but different in, in a way. But something that, you know, we we, all, we wouldn't be too surprised to see how the type or how the model will look like. That's what I that's what I think it could look like. But seeing it anything bigger than two than, than a two seater or a two door. I, I I, I don't see that at the moment, but you don't, I mean, you don't even, think it'll even, have more than two seats. I don't think so. No. I, I mean, oh. at the moment, because even in the bio, when they were like doing it through the prototypes and everything, it was only, it was just, it was a very small vehicle. A very they were small all very vehicle. compact, yeah. but most compacts sold today still have more than two seats. Mm. Um, it is worth noting. So to support your point, uh, because I think it's important that we disagree, but try and find ways to agree. Yeah. Even when, when, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I disagree. I think it's four <laughs> seats, but in support okay. of your claim, Two let's seat. look at the math on the average number of passengers in an Uber, Lyft, or taxi. The answer is one or two, right? Mm. Yeah. How many times? Uh, I, I can tell you the last time I was in a taxi with more than one other person, and it was when I was, oh, probably 20. So almost 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And since then, I, I've been in a taxi many, many times. Um, now, now that I think about it, when I was in Mexico with my family, we always used Uber XL because there were, uh, you know, so many of us, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, but that's, that's the outlier. And even then I couldn't just call a taxi. I had to use a specialized service Uber XL to get around. So that was, you know, fine. Uh, this doesn't have to be everything for everyone out of the gate. Um, now, I did get a comment here from Mark Patochnik, uh, who is a longtime viewer. Uh, so this is a skeptical comment, but uh, the fact that he's a longtime viewer and supporter um, to me adds 
credibility. RoboTaxi and another Elon lie, it will never come out. Um, this feels too much to me like a bet the farm moment. This is the sort of thing he said that after the Model 3 ramp, no more betting the, the whole company. We're going to do just things that we know about. And slowing down on deployment of a compact car in weight of RoboTaxi to me feels dangerous and premature. Is mm. it? <clears throat> so say that question one more time. I'll just sure. read the comments on the side here. Oh, sure, sure. So yeah. <laughs> In 2019, with uh, production hell and then delivery hell, Elon yeah. said, look, we got so low on cash, we bet the company on the success of this one project, we will never bet the company again. And now we see them sandbagging, uh, slowing down production of the compact. And we can say that it has been slowed down because Mexico's groundbreaking was expected quite some time ago and did not happen. Mm. And then we've got this Reuters report, which indicates that at least some uh, aspects of some models in, in a new platform are being delayed or scrapped entirely or reconsidered entirely. Is this another, you know what, let's do it. Let's gamble on this. Let's bet the entire company on this new product that may or may not work. And of course they're but, saying it will work, but they've been saying that for some time. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That that's, that's an interesting question. So, um, I think this time around they're more confident uh, because unlike 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 the Model Three, the Model Three was like okay, they were like literally like days away from bankruptcy and they pulled it off somehow. But with this robot taxi thing, because version twelve has come out and is performing so well, and the up and the updates next one's gonna be point four and then point five, point six continues to get better and better and better. I think what they're predicting with their analysis uh, analysis is that this is going to be exponential and it's going to get to a point where this thing can really just drive itself we can bring the robo taxi out i think that's what i think that's what the bet is and that's why robo taxi is being unveiled very very soon now do i think this is like screw it let's go you know let's go you know all in into this thing and see if it works or not I think it's not as severe as Model 3 because they do have the data to back it up and it keeps getting better and better and better. So, um, compact so, car, yeah. It, yeah, I'll push so, back on that. So, okay. the worth noting when they, when Elon said we were days from bankruptcy, yeah. uh, they still had billions of dollars in the bank. And we know because it was only a week later that the quarter ended and we got to see what their cash on hand was. However, having a billion, two billion in the bank doesn't mean you're not on the very cusp of bankruptcy because when you get below a certain point of solvency, uh, debts start to be called in, uh, uh, lending, borrowing becomes very difficult and you can enter a death spiral. And then the stock market sees this danger they start a sell off, the price goes down, other debts start being called due. One that we saw recently was Fisker said, oh, look, we've still got like over a hundred million dollars cash on hand, but their stock price went down to a point where one of their lenders uh, could all of a sudden call in the debt due in full. They're done. They were just done at that point. And I assume the lender didn't because they would already be insolvent if that was the case. Yeah. So the days from bankruptcy is an exaggeration, but not, uh, not without merit. I know they want us to believe it's ready, but I just have to go back to the fact that their predictions on how close to ready full self-driving is have been always wrong. And a number of Elon statements have been demonstrably nonsense. He said in the past, in the past few years, I'm driving the bleeding edge build and it actually works. It's if you saw it, it would blow your mind. Okay. Mm. Well, maybe on the path that you drive to and from work, but the engineers surely made sure that that path worked perfectly first because it was all heuristic and they could dedicate outsized time to just that path. I'm here to tell you version version 11 did not work for a lot of people. I had a video earlier this week where yeah. three of us talked yeah, about yeah, it, I about that. our experiences where it just didn't, 
didn't work for us and and version 12 does in many ways but the question is how many more nines remain before it's safer than a person before it can be reliably trusted to just drive across town without you that it's going to come back without a thousand dollars in curb rash and maybe uh, a little bit of bumper paint missing we don't we don't know the answer to that and I don't know if the answer is known or knowable because until we get there, AI is a black box. If you ask the engineers how long until they get down to just 10 fingers reliably, I don't know if they would have had necessarily a clear picture of how long it would take. And another thing about the robot taxi is that, well, don't they need to get approval and regulated before they can get cars you know, with no one driving, with no steering wheel or pedal, just driving around. Like, this is why, to me, it was so weird. I mean, it's extremely bullish news that the robot taxi is going to be unveiled on August 8th, but it's like, but, you know, everything else, like the the regulated, the, the, the approval, all that kind of stuff. And that's why in my, well, in my valuation model, I don't even put the robot taxi in. And mm-hmm. for them to, at least for another four years, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why when they're going to unveil it, I'm just like, well, what's the plan? What, what, what's going on? What, what, what is this? What is this push? What's, what's, is it because Reuters came out with that article? Is that why Elon pushed it? Or is that was already said? I don't even know. So it feels like it to me. Hmm. Th- that's how it felt is, is he was saying, look, because why else? Why, why today? Why not wait until July? That uh, announcement is so far out that it's very, or at least an earnings call. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't yes. know. It, the timing was very weird. Um, I would like to see. Uh, what, one thing I've noticed, he, he posted recently saying, here's how to keep your notifications in check. And he had every restriction set. He showed every on his profile. If you don't follow me, I'll never see your notifications. If I don't follow you, if your account's too new, if you're not, I mean, every check box was checked. And that's how you create an echo chamber. That's how you get in a bubble mm. and ensure that you stay in the bubble. And then it forces people who want the money, who want the engagement to say the nicest things possible, uh, just so that he'll, just so that senpai will notice. And yeah. it's a little so discouraging. I'm, cu- I'm curious to know, I'm curious to know your thoughts. What, what do you really think about this? Like, what Like, what do you really think about, you know, um, uh, the unveiling coming on, like on August, like, like we just, we just talked about the Reuters and that could be the reason why it's been pushed, but why so early in the game, you know, like, to, I mean, the way, I mean, there's a debate going on right now that they're saying that, no, some, um, the version 12 is doing very well. And um, I am in that camp a little bit as well, that it's doing very well. And every every other update's going to be a exponential growth. And then there's the, you know, other debate that goes like, well, I mean, this is not going to be ready until it gets approved and regulated. And this could take a very long time. And so... At the other end, you're seeing Kathy Woods just dumping, just buying crazy amount of shares and on interviews keeps talking about the robot taxis, just keeps pushing the robot taxis and, you know, talks about the valuation being over 2000, 2500. And it's like, all of a sudden you get this, you know, time frame from Elon that August 8th is going to be the unveil of the robot taxi. So it's just like, what's going on? Like, what what do you truly think about this? Like, (laughs) I'm still stunned to be honest. So, (laughs) um, so the, the, let's talk about the regulation first, cause that's an easy one. Uh, there are places where it's already approved. Nevada is one, uh, California is essentially one effectively one. There would be some paperwork, but it would be able to roll out. A lot of U S laws are reactive rather than proactive where unless something is explicitly, disallowed it's allowed uh i believe that if it like let's say they say january 1st the first ones will be on the road and functioning they will not be able to build them fast enough to keep up with new places that are approving them so the regulation part i'm not worried about if it works it works and if you're in one state that allows it and the next state over doesn't 
you're going to feel like you're time traveling by going between those two states because one of them is living in the dark ages. So it'll come around and it'll happen quick enough. Uh, so the, ne the next one I would want to address is Kathy. Kathy yeah. is very sharp, um, but I don't agree with all of her uh Oh, with all of her beliefs. She, oh, okay. I still have some shares in ARC. Uh, they have not performed well. I consider Kathy to be my, you know how a lot of times people will ask their friends for investment advice. Putting money in ARC K is my version of that. She's smarter than me. She might be right. I'm willing to gamble a little bit on not very much money to see if any of her moonshots pay off. When she was heralded as right, because she was the one who predicted today's stock price, she was right for the wrong reasons. She showed the math. The math was wrong, but it happened to accidentally be right. That doesn't make her a genius. That makes her very lucky. So uh, she's pushing RoboTaxi because that would, that is the clearest path to taking Tesla to a very, very big new level. Uh, and then, uh, the, so then the big question, why? Why announce it? Why announce something that far out? Is it ready or not? Well, the fact that it's in August means it's not ready. They can't show it now. They can't show it in a month. It's not ready. That is an aspirational target. Listen, engineers, you've got until August 8th to make this happen, to be able to show what we're doing. When Steve Jobs did the first demo of the first iPhone, it was faked. He had a whole range of iPhones in front of him. When he would show one thing, he'd go, look, it does this. And then he'd put it down and he'd grab the next phone. <laughs> because if I try and use all of them, it's going to crash. But we've got the date, we've got the price, and it's going to work. And it did work. He was able to push his engineers to turn that magic into, into engineering reality. Mm -hmm. This is a much bigger trick than getting some hardware to work together. This is and a hitherto unsolved problem of the highest order. So we'll see, we'll see how, how much motive, you know, there's only so much you can, the coach can come in and give you a rah, rah speech and make everyone, yeah, we're going to win in the second half. Look, those other players outweigh you by 30 pounds a piece. They're a half a foot <laughs> taller. We don't stand a chance, but at least we're having fun. And that may be the, the obstacle that we're facing. Um, I did, yeah, I did want to say real quick, uh, Still Learning yeah. said, you guys are not smart enough to question Elon. Everyone is smart enough to question everyone else. If you get into a loop where you think that someone is uh, infallible, you you run the risk of uh, <laughs> of believing some truly terrible things from some truly terrible people and not knowing the difference. So anyone is qualified to question. Yeah, uh, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, but... but they got to be at least confident about having some sort of unveil like that. Right. At this, because I'm thinking, I'm not, you know, I'm putting myself in, in Tesla's engineering shoes, whatever. It's like, okay, if we're not ready about, if, if we're not ready for this product, for this service, this robot taxi to be unveiled, why should we even do it? People already know that this year is going to be, you know, not a, a gap good year, year for us. Yeah. Like, you know, it's going to be a gap year. Why? Why even you know try to have a blimp of hope? Yeah. Uh, in the you comments, tell us what what you guys think. I'd like to hear more feedback. Uh, there was, yeah, there was this one so, guy in the comments who who, yeah, who said who, who said something about how would this impact the compact car, twenty five thousand compact car. I can't find this comment. I don't know. I can't find it anymore. But he did. He did say something. He did say that. Um, well, let's give a quick recap while you're looking for that. Greenpad wants to know, wait, I just joined. What's happened? Two things of huge note today. This morning, Reuters said the compact car is canceled. We have confirmed reports via emails that have been leaked to us that specify certain things are not moving forward. Therefore, China's too powerful. Tesla can't face them. And the compact is canceled. Uh, if whether those first things being true or not, it doesn't matter in the context. The two things don't follow each other. Um, I've seen, I have not seen anything that would lead me to this conclusion, but that's fine. And the second piece of news is Elon said, you know what? Fine. August 8th, RoboTaxi uh, event. We're unveiling it. Let's go. So that'll be hmm. interesting. 
Yeah, and I found the comment. There we go. Tarek Ahmad. Interesting. Okay. Shout out to you. So wait, the low cost Tesla 25,000 is potentially happening. Well, no, it's not potentially happening. It's definitely happening, but um, we are going to getting, we are getting the, the, getting the robot taxi unveil in four months time. So I don't know how, what it's going to be all about, but it's going to be very interesting to see what I think is going to happen is that they're just going to say, Hey, this is how the vehicle looks like prototype and um because i think i think because it doesn't it won't affect vehicle sales that's why they're gonna do it they're just showing that okay here's how it looks like here's a system not everybody can buy it right and um this is how it's gonna work and we should be launching early 2025 because i think i think they've learned their lesson from cybertruck that if you're gonna announce a product don't drag it for four years <laughs> Get it up and running within six months. I think that's the idea. I hope they've learned that. I'm not convinced they have. Green Pad <laughs> wants to know, is the $25,000 car the RoboTaxi? And I'm going to say, I think it is. Uh, I think it is. But I think the $25,000 car could be more than that. Uh, the Yeah, so that's possible. Um, if they really have it, they should catch the whole world by the short hairs and just introduce it. Too much... Uh, Frottage is a bust. I'm not sure what that last part means, but uh, <laughs> it's probably a typo. But I would agree that if they have it, they should just show it. I don't think they have it. I don't think it's ready yet. Uh, hmm. Mark says, why is Elon trying to land a rocket? <laughs> you'll never, it's true, you'll never land a rocket. Well, the difference is landing a rocket is <clears throat> easier than navigating traffic. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. A Tesla could crank up production of Model Ys at Giga Texas and use them as an interim solution until the RoboTaxi fleet comes out because it's the software, not the vehicle. And I would agree. I don't know what there would be that's different about the RoboTaxi that would differentiate it from any other car apart from the fact that it has a wheel. Maybe it's got some new, um, you know, uh, accessibility features like a ramp uh, or... But I, I think... I still think that as an interim solution, it could work just fine. Um, yeah, and you're you're looking at training data there. Tell me what you got. Yeah, it looks like uh, Elon just uh, congratulated the Tesla AI team. They just hit one billion FSD miles driven. Mm -hmm. Look at that! Oh my god, that you see that uptick going up like crazy. Mm -hmm. That's insane. That's that beautiful. is in that's just insane and this is going to continue to go up like this it's, it's going to go up like continue to go up like a wall <laughs> mm -hmm. and and what we a month ago we didn't know yet that they were no longer compute constrained yeah. having data doesn't help if you can't if you can't crunch it but it appears yeah. that that issue is not the case anymore and that was a fast fix they did which is insane that was a really fast fix because they said Which it's going to take the oh, compute issue. Getting, mm -hmm. Yeah. They said it's going to take maybe till the end of the year or something like that. But it, it could also be the that month. they've just got better software, better algorithms that are yeah. able to get more done with less compute, which would yeah. not surprise me at all. I feel like that might be a cheaper avenue of attack to getting all the compute you need is making it just run more quickly. Uh, it's yeah. yeah, pretty interesting. I'm getting I'm getting a lot of comments about how would this affect the stock price. Well, first of all, I don't think it's gonna do much. I mean, we are seeing a, a post market up by like okay, well, four percent it was higher, but I don't think what Wall Street will really care that much until we start seeing a fleet actually go out and actually generate some actual cash. Then they'll be adding it to their valuation, and depending on how much they're gonna be you know, generating and revenue and profits and what the margins are going to be, if they can scale it like across the U.S. and North America, all of Canada and North and the U.S., I mean, this is a big deal. I mean, we could, I mean, we, we know that RoboTaxi is going to be nearly close to 100%, 80% profit for Tesla if they're going to be using their own fleet to it. If it's going to be, if, it, if it's going to be with like um, people with Teslas using it, which I don't think, that's going to happen anytime soon. But if it's going to be with that, then I could probably see a revenue split share. But in terms of having the robot, I mean, I'm having a sense, my gut's telling me that the unveiling 
and August 8th is going to be like, hey, guys, it's going to be us doing it, and we're going to be testing it in these cities. And once we get really good at it, we're going to be scaling up to other cities, and we're going to be having a separate company or a separate division in Tesla where we just do RoboTaxi fleets, and we sell us our own units to the RoboTaxi fleets, helping us achieve that 20 million vehicles you know, by 2030. I don't know. I don't know. My gut is pushing me towards this side. And if that's going to be the case and we're going to be seeing taxis in New York City, for example, being replaced by these robot taxis, well, my goodness, this is a obviously multi-billion dollar, tens, hundreds billion dollar opportunity if it gets scaled to that level, which could be worth trillions. And that's just a robot taxi. Yeah. This is my thoughts, but yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think there is no scenario that you or I could suggest right now that would be crazy. I think everything yeah. is on the table. Anything is possible. I think the only thing I will say that for certain is within my expectations for August 8th is that we will see it, that we will see what it yeah. looks like, that and that we will hear a plan both for deployment and revenue generation involving it. And hopefully that includes dates, real dates, but yeah. I just don't think it will because the, if it's the new vehicle, which it by all accounts sounds like it will be, it will not be manufactured until the end of this year when the, at any kind of volume, uh, when the new extension to Giga Texas is complete. And you can see in the drone footage, they still don't have all the, all the roof on, they don't have the walls up. It's, yeah. It's still got some time. And then, of course, getting it all dialed in, they've got to actually install the equipment, get it running, and get it configured to do something, which I believe hasn't been done before, depending on what the model is. There are certainly some new technologies we've only seen in the Cybertruck, like 48 volt, uh, but we'll, we'll see. I think also it's going to be very lightweight compared to other electric cars, specifically ones that Tesla has made. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we define engineering on that car, but it says, yeah, I don't think robot taxi will come out this year, most likely 2025. And I think 2025 is still optimistic. It's still optimistic because if the compact car is not going to come out till end of 2025, at least announced by end of 2025 till 2026, I think that's even optimistic 2025. That's why I'm, I'm saying that we will see some sort of a prototype vehicle for the reveal and the plan of how it's going to be. Uh, Greenpad raised a very good point. Where okay, is it? share it. Uh, Robo taxis. Uh, oh, was that it? Maybe it was up higher. Uh, uh, oh, here it is. Tesla can ignore the tax credit requirements for the robo taxis if you're leasing them. All leases uh, qualify for that discount. And I've seen people say, right, but if I'm leasing it, I don't get. 7,500 back. No, but it does come off the total amount that you're financing in the lease uh, that's being carried during the lease. So it does reduce the price. So yeah, they wouldn't need domestic batteries if the robo taxi fleet is not going to be sold, but leased out uh, to other fleet operators. So that's an interesting consideration there. Yeah. And guys, this is all speculation. We're just like, we're just like trying to grasp what, what the heck has happened today. Today has just been a massive roller coaster <laughs> with this Tesla stuff. It's just been crazy. And yeah. no one, and I mean, no one has expected that we're ever going to get any robot taxi unveil or any taste of any robot taxi anytime soon. And then Elon comes out and RKO's us with this news. So we're just like, okay. <laughs> Uh, MD Hofstie pointed out they still need, yeah, the, the factory can't be done because they still need to tear up all the concrete and re-pour it two more times, I think, is the is the ritual in Texas to please the concrete gods there. It's very frustrating. I have never seen this kind of concrete rework before. Even Giga Berlin has only had a few patches here and there. What are you doing, guys? Is it like, is there some kind of concrete mafia you have to pay tribute to? I don't understand. Uh, 
and 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 who is this lex luther here is saying and now he hides us again i take you guys off the screen i put the comments up when there's space for it like there is right now because it's just covering the the right side uh you know quarter of the screen it's not personal you guys uh i keep bringing you back come on man where's the love (laughs) yeah Uber down 1.5%. Yeah, this is one prediction that I made back in 2020 <clears throat> is that if they if Tesla actually does the robo taxi thing and has their own fleet. Oh, man, I Uber and Lyft. We could probably say goodbye to them if, you know, the Tesla comes out with a robo taxi <clears throat> and does it, you know, at a much larger scale and it's much cheaper, much cheaper than Uber. <clears throat> We could probably see we could probably see Uber and Lyft saying bye bye, or at most at most best case scenario being bought out by Tesla, so they can at least just say okay, we already have here these data, swap them up, swap them. <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah. I don't know. That, that's why, I, and I, it's crazy because I do see Uber getting very cozy with Tesla. You know, agreeing to sell their vehicles at a you know at a discount, agreeing with with you know with Tesla's whatever requests they have getting very very cozy with them so maybe it's so, a potential future buyout uh i don't believe uber's technology is worth much so i'm going to address uber real quick though i should say we're probably going to wind this down in about 10 minutes here yeah. so if you have questions and comments let's get them in but i've got some very big thoughts on uber and why they are not worth investing in uber is a dumpster fire and here's a couple <laughs> reasons why when i went to the dominican republic I got to the airport, I requested an Uber, and the driver wrote to me and said, 50 bucks cash, no other option, take it or leave it. And so I disconnected, went to another driver, 50 bucks cash, take it or leave it. Everybody, 50 (laughs) bucks cash. And mind you, this is like a $12 ride. It's very close to town. And you cannot, and surely Uber can see all these people requesting rides and not getting them. Because even the people who accept the ride aren't doing it on the platform. They're doing it off platform in cash. How does Uber and all over the Dominican Republic, if you're in a touristy zone, you are not going to be able to get a normal fare Uber. And they don't either. They don't have the technology to catch it, in which case they're not worth a dime or they know and they don't care, in which case they're not. They can't be trusted. Then you've got Uber Eats. Uber Eats is a mess the dry the restaurants complain that they're not making any money the drivers complain they're not making any money and uber says by the way we're still losing money where's the money going you guys consumers are paying double triple price for their hamburger and and no one's making money this is a disaster and it needs to it it's going to go away because they're not making money despite overcharging everyone in the chain uber is a mess I wouldn't buy them, certainly not for their technology. Their technology is weak. All they've got is a name and a first mover advantage. But I guarantee you, uh, same thing happened in Mexico. I yeah, would believe that. If, if you're in a touristy city, I believe it. I had great luck with Uber in Mexico City. But Mexico City, despite having 12 million tourists a year, isn't really a tourist town because that's not that many at any given time. It's not a big percentage of the city. And it's... That they're making a worse experience for their consumers. They're making a worse experience for their drivers. It's just bad all around. If you've got a big name and you want to beat that big name, you've got to do something different. And different is there's no tipping in a, in a robo taxi. There's no idle chit chat. My friend recently had a chance to ride in a Waymo in Phoenix. And he said, oh, it's so nice not having to play the, so how long you've been driving for Uber? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> He didn't, oh, you're new in town? Oh, it's your first time? Oh, have you been to the Mesa? I don't know. (laughs) It just let me be on my phone and quiet and peaceful and not expect a tip and not have to deal with it. So there's, so Uber, all they are to me is a brand name and one that's tarnished to begin with. I wouldn't buy them out. I wouldn't buy them out unless it was like when Justin Timberlake bought MySpace for a few million dollars just because he wanted the name. <laughs> no, that's that's funny, but I don't know. I'm having these senses that Uber is like trying to hint to Tesla that, hey, man, I know you're going to have this robo taxi thing fleet 
later on in the future. And, you know, that's a direct competitor to us and we can't really compete with that. You know, you know, we're here, we're here, you know, you just see us. That's all you got to say. <laughs> I think, I don't know. I think maybe in the long-term plan, that's, that's what Uber wants what for Tesla to do later on in the future, because I mean, um, well, I just took a look at their quick their earnings. They did make money in the previous quarter, but it's very hard for Uber to, you know, sustain any earnings <laughs> throughout the quarter, throughout the year. So I could just imagine how hard it is for them to always be profitable and how much of a nightmare it is to run that company. But <laughs> I, I, I just don't see where the money goes. You don't own the cars. You don't own the drivers. Yeah. Uh, you know, what's your overhead? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But no, it's crazy. And what, what, what's, I, I, I don't know if I, if I, if I told you this, uh, Brian, but Dubai, they will be the first country to regulate and approve or no for, for first city, first city to regulate and approve full self driving for ta robot taxis. They've already, they, they are already advertising this in Dubai that you can get in a car and you just speak your destination wherever you want to go and it'll go and it, it'll drive much better than human because they have decent roads there and, you know, very strict rules in terms of driving and stuff like that. So, they're, I'm just excited to see that day to happen. And I New think that roads, they will come. Wide roads, modern roads, yeah. oh, expensive yeah. Yeah. roads. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the only problem there becomes, is the map up to date? Because it changes real quick. Yeah. Uh, um, well, <laughs> it's not a concern. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. sure that that's <laughs> of all the problems, that one can be solved in minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's why I think that robot taxi is going to be uh, Dubai first. Um, I, I I can already imagine whoever it is running Dubai in the robot taxi section or or or, or the infrastructure they're looking at. Very interested. Going to give it a very good eye on eighth August eighth to see how that's going to be because it's it's a place that's definitely going to happen. Hundred percent. First place. So, so so some of the comments I'm getting here, uh, Mark wants to know how many changes are we going to expect to see after the eight, eight announcement? And I think the answer is between some and a lot. I yeah. think those are all yeah. fair points. Um, yeah. Again, I think, I think it's a concept. It's a con it's a concept just showing what the concept is and everything, how, what, what the idea is with the robot taxi and I don't know. I just can't get my mind off this quit. How much of a coincidence today was with the Reuters coming out? That th this part is still bugging me for some reason. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. We'll it, find out on August eighth. <laughs> we will. Uh, Uber drivers in the Bay Area are scary. I mean, you have to stop at stop signs, right? <laughs> uh, Troy says uh, this. Uh, says Tesla will make their own ride hailing app. I'm confident they will. Uh, I don't know what yeah. the obstacles to it are, but compared to some of the other, um, the, uh, compared to some of the other software, ta uh, obstacles they've tackled successfully, this strikes me as an easier one to implement. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. So Brian, any last thoughts on, on this? Any last thoughts you got? Like. No, I'm we so haven't sad. had time to get our first thoughts in order. This is That's all true. brand new information today. Breaking information. Breaking news. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I don't know what on earth we're supposed to make of it, but it's going to be interesting to see. I think Compact is still moving forward. I think Robotaxi yeah, may have been accelerated from its previous schedule, and I don't know if that's a good thing or not yet, and I think it's not known if it's a good thing or not, but we'll find out in in coming months all all yeah. i know is i'm frustrated because i'm going to be in uh california at the end of july for the x takeover and it looks like from there i'm okay. what just going to get in the car and start driving east to texas i guess mm. it's gonna make for a long couple weeks on the road for old brian but that's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun but well you got you got, you got version 12 though so the thing will drive for you yeah i do <laughs> and my and i'm hopeful that I'll be able to get into that event by using referral credits or something because mm -hmm. I've only been to one Tesla event and it was a shareholder meeting as a plus one for someone who actually got in. So for the nice. people who say, 
So the people who say, oh, yeah, but they only give tickets to influencers. No, we either buy our way in with points or uh, we're a plus one for somebody else. We get no special treatment. Mm. And that's and that's something they could fix easily and cheaply uh, and should because it, it's a very cheap way to uh, <laughs> to manage just the most basic level of PR to to a level that every company with more than 50 employees has somehow managed to figure out. But, uh, you know, I'm definitely not salty about that. Yeah, no, I haven't been to any Tesla event, which I would love to, to be in, but uh, sometime in the future, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Comment down below. What do you guys think about the situation with, you know, robot taxi being, I think, I think it's bullish, obviously, but you know, what's going to be unveiled? What's going to be talked about? Why so soon? Right? These are the questions that we're going to have to sit and think about and see what will happen on August 8th. So I'm curious to know what you guys think. And, um, I think we're going to wrap it now. Uh, Brian, any last thoughts you want to shout I out? Think you I think you wrapped it up nicely. I do want to give a big shout out to all my patrons, including who is this Lex, you know, I love you, brother. You gotta be nicer to me. I'm emotionally fragile. You can call me anytime and you should. Uh, so Ooh. with that, you know, stay tuned and juicy and all that good stuff. Check out Peggy. If you're watching on my channel, check me out. If you're watching on his, you know what you got to do. We're both, uh, working at this every day. And yeah. well, at least for me, I love it. I love it. It's awesome. That. It's awesome. And everyone who's watching, make sure you guys subscribe to Futuraza and follow him on X. Link is link in the description already. And um, yeah, again, comment down below what you guys think. And we shall see you in, in the next videos. See ya.